very good morning students how are you all doing safe at home are you all following your subjects regularly do all the homeworks and few of you are uh, not becoming irregular in sending your assignments please don't be like that children send your assignments regularly your assignment is your attendance so make sure you are sending your assignments every day is it clear and in the last class we started with this lesson heat so we saw well, what are the effects of heat and what is conduction what is radiation and what is convection we saw conduction means transfer of heat in solids convection means transfer of heat through liquids convection means transfer of heat without any medium we call it as in radiation okay so next is and uh, then we discussed about the temperature what are the th three different temperature scales we saw celsius scale fahrenheit scale and kelvin scale we saw and then absolute temperature also we saw and conversion of degree celsius to temperature temperature to fahrenheit those formulas and all we discussed today we are going to see about the specific heat capacity so you might have felt that the land is cool in the morning and hot during the day time but water in the lake will be almost at a particular temperature both in the morning as well as in the afternoon so pathinga apna land time ninga vandu in the temperature if you feel the temperature land is cool in the morning time ipo at present you can feel that better hot during the day time okay but water in the lake pathinga abdina temperature both in the morning as well as in the afternoon eppadi irukum or particular temperature da maintain agum so both are subjected to amount of heat energy from the sun sun but they react differently so land um and sun velichathila da irukku lake water um sun velichathila da irukku but why are they showing difference in temperature like this we are going to see it is because both of them have different properties rendu perku enna property irukku vera vera property irukku in general the amount of heat energy absorbed or lost by a body is determined by three factors so our body evlo temperature absorb pannum illa evlo liberate pannum gradu three factors are there da irukku one is mass of the body that is weight of the body and change in temperature how quickly it will change the temperature is the second criteria and third is nature of the material of the body so nature eppadi irukku it is a hard solid or liquid or a gaseous substance that is the nature of the material of the body so we are going to understand by the following observations first is observation 1 quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 liter of water will be more than the heat required to raise the heat temperature of 500 ml of water so 1 liter water heat pandrathukku time aguma illa 500 liter ml of water heat pandrathukku time aguma definitely 1 liter of water heat pandrathukku time will be requiring more so if q is the quantity of heat absorbed by m then the m is mass of the body then q is directly proportional to m which means quantity is directly proportional to the mass of the body so 1 liter is na adukeetha mass tha irukum 500 ml adha ara liter na adodeya mass tha irukum so evlo weight irukum adukeetha maadhiri da heat supply pananum so time um adukeetha maadhiri increase aagum observation 2 quantity of heat energy required to raise the temperature of 250 ml of water at 100 degree celsius is more than the heat energy required to raise the temperature to 50 degree celsius so that is or 250 ml of water to 100 degree celsius ku romba time theva padum than 50 degree celsius ku raise pandrathukku ena 50 degree celsius steek seekrama raise aidum 100 degree celsius raise aagrathukku it will take some time so inge enna paathinga appadina q is directly proportional to change in temperature of the body though so thus heat lost or gained by a substance when its temperature changes by delta t is q is directly proportional to m delta t so q is equal to m c delta t so to remove this proportionality symbol we are introducing the constant term c from the above equation the absolute temperature and energy of the system are proportional to each other the proportionality constant is a specific heat capacity c of the substance in the pro proportionality constant the proportionality symbol c we have introduced you know which is called as in specific heat capacity so we are just rearranging this form c is equal to q by m delta 
T. Is it clear? So C is a specific heat capacity. So what does this specific heat capacity mean? So this is an important definition. So listen here. Specific heat capacity of a substance is defined as the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 kg of a substance by 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin. So 1 kg of a substance, 1 degree Celsius or 1 Kelvin, we have to raise heat to raise the temperature of 1 kg of a substance by 1 kg of a substance. Is it clear? So, the 1 degree Celsius raise பண்டுத்துக்கு எவ்வளோ heat நமக்கு தேவப்படுதுங்கரதுதான் specific heat capacity. The SI unit of specific heat capacity is joule per kg per Kelvin. That is joule kg inverse Kelvin inverse. The most common used units of specific heat capacity all joule per kg degree Celsius and joule per gram degree Celsius. Celsius. Among all the substances, water has the highest specific heat capacity and its value is you can see the specific heat capacity of water 4200 joule per kg degree Kelvin. So actually degree will not be there. It is printing mistake. If degree is given means you should use Celsius. If Kelvin means no degree sign will be there. So, there is printing mistake there. So, water absorbs a large amount of heat for unit raise in temperature. So, one degree Celsius raise agarthak, water requires large amount of heat that is for 1 kg of water. Thus, water is used as a coolant in car radiators and factories to keep engines and other machinery parts cool. So, it is a lot of heat in the race. So, it is a lot of heat in the race. So, it is a lot of heat in the race. So, it is a lot of heat in the race. So, it is a lot of heat. It is because of the same reason temperature of water in the lake does not change much during the daytime. So, now, in the water, heat observation is a lot slow. Grow heat to raise the temperature of unit mass of the body by 1 degree Celsius that is heat capacity but heat capacity is heat required to raise the temperature of the entire mass of the body by 1 degree Celsius so thus heat capacity or thermal capacity is defined as the amount of the heat energy required to raise the temperature of a body by 1 degree Celsius so another body any heat any body if it is going we are going to raise the temperature by 1 degree celsius then we call it as in heat cap capacity it is denoted by c so heat capacity is equal to quantity of heat required divided by raise in temperature so already we have used the symbol c so we have to differentiate the c c dash so c dash is equal to q by t so SI unit of heat capacity is joule per kelvin it is also expressed in calories per degree Celsius, kilocalories per degree Celsius or joule per degree Celsius. So, you can see the simple problem. Iron ball requires 500 joules of heat energy to raise its temperature by 20 Kelvin. Calculate the heat capacity of the iron ball. So, use the formula. Heat energy required is Q by delta T. Directly substitute the values. 5000 by 20 will be 250 joule per Kelvin. Next is change of state. So, what is this change of state, children? What are the three states of matter we have? We have solid, liquid and gas. So, we are going to see how the solid is going to get converted into liquid and liquid getting converted into solid, sorry, gas and gas getting converted into what solid again and how this process cyclic process taking place we are going to see with the help of the heat changes along with the graphical representation now let's see how it is going to take place